Coach Bloss the Classic has come and gone. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm lost for words right now as far as what I want to say in this video. But we're going to get through this anyway because I actually had a chance to get there to the game and see this firsthand as far as what was going to take place. And there's still a lot going through my mind because the one thing I could take from this game is something Coach Prime said in the beginning before the season started. And we're going to get into it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so we get all the coming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. It's never positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing and get straight to it. Because, you know, Coach is fresh, fresh back from MIAO in which I had a ball. I want to say, first and foremost, I got to thank all of my supporters. I'm not going to say subscribers, my supporters of the channel that I was able to meet while I was there at the stadium or that I was able to meet while I was in Miami. I appreciate you all. I thank you for the great times, the gestures, the, you know, the information that you gave me and, and the confidence. You know, you guys are really ramping coaches' confidence up with this thing as well. And a lot of the positive feedback from you guys as well. I cannot forget that because there's always a number of positive vibes over here all the time. But I will say this, uh, looking at this game, the one thing that I, 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 the one thing that really comes to mind is the fact that both teams were playing for something. You had Jackson State, they were playing for their city, dealing with the water issue. You had FAMU playing for their teammates who were not playing in that first game against North Carolina because of the um, issue with them being eligible. So we already know, I, I was expecting this game to be a, a lot more closer than what it was. If you saw the pregame, my pregame prediction was 27-24 at Jackson State. I just said they're going to have a little extra oomph to get over the top. But what cracked me up with all of this is the fact that listening to some of the Jackson State fans in the stands talking, I mean, when I say they was talking that talk, I mean, I'm going to insert a clip in right here. What you say again? You say what? Unnecessary roughness against Jackson State. The ball is now I'm gonna tell you. If y'all don't, if y'all think I'm jiving about these Jackson State fans, listen. I, I I loved every last bit of it because looking at all of the banter that was going back and forth online before the game even happened, it was ten times worse up in the stands. Just listening to that previous clip. But you know what? I love Dad for. I love him as far as his energy and everything that's going on. It just lets me know that. They love their institution, and that's what a lot of folks don't understand. Like, a lot of you out there that's watching this, you may go to a different institution that's not Jackson State, and you love your institution just the same. Well, you're not going to let nobody talk no smack to you and just think they're going to get away with it. You're going to go ahead and give them that work right back, and that's exactly what Dad was doing. So I had a great time with that. A lot of individuals talked about how Fam, you, you know, they gave North Carolina a run for their money. Well, guys, another statement that I made in the pregame again was talking about the fact that North Carolina allowed Appalachian State to put 61 points up on the board. We saw that they had a soft defense in which they, it was a soft zone defense that they ran because they understood the fact that FAMU had speed out there on the edges, making sure they were not going to allow them to just blow by them up and down the daggone field. They're going to keep everything in front of them so that they can make the tackle or either, you know, cause a fumble, interception, whatever have you, to keep them from getting that ball down the field, putting them points on the board. And because of the fact that FAMU did not have those additional bodies there, yeah, they got to wearing on them a lot, click, a lot quicker than they would have originally playing with everyone there. But... <laughs> The one, this one key thing, though, what Coach Prime told everybody in the beginning, and everybody like, oh, Coach, you you cap, Coach. Coach Prime, you cap. You ain't talking, hey, you ain't, you ain't got that over there. We ain't even trying to hear it. You got all these folks coming in. You created a brand new team. You got to go ahead and get everybody together in jail and do this, that, and the third. You cap, Coach. It ain't going to happen. Coach told us, everybody that's recruiting in the SWAC right now is recruiting according to what they did last year. And Jackson State has stepped this thing up to another level completely. And people don't really understand that. And the one word that he used was dominate. And you know what? In this game, that's exactly what Jackson State did. What? That's exactly what they did. They came out there and freaking dominated. The, the thing was, when they scored their first touchdown in the first quarter, by halfway through the quarter, you could start seeing folks was wearing down. And I said, I said that very thing. Listen, you're going to see people start wearing down real quick in this game because 
They're coming off that game from last week playing against North Carolina. There's no way in the world they're going to be ready to deal with whatever's going to go on out there on the field. Yeah, adrenaline is going to be high because, yeah, they find out Isaiah Lamb was coming back. And then, you know, I think it was game day, I finally found out that Bowler was out there playing. So I was like, wait a minute. I said, okay, so they got two of their starters back on defense. So I should see Jenna Hunt, Bowler, and Land just start going to work. At least Land and Bowler getting out there doing their thing. Excuse me, Land and Hunt doing their thing out there on the initial defensive line of scrimmage where they're going they're going against Jack State front five and they put some pressure on Shadua Sanders. Okay, we saw Isaiah Land. He what he uh hurried uh QB1. Shadua Sanders up one play, then he came back the next play, and he sacked him based on a stunt that he did out there on the field. But I was waiting to see more in the game, and I just didn't see it. I didn't see Hunt really get off of that game either, and I'm just like, okay, what we got going on, guys? When, I'm looking at, when I was looking at the FAMU defense, I'm like, guys, if y'all not going to put no pressure on QB1 up front, it's going to be a long game. And guess what? It was a long game for FAMU. The other thing that really got me, and I just saw the video of, of this, like as I was sitting down here getting everything together with my notes and whatnot, the fact that what Travis Hunter, what excuse me, what's Co what Coach Prime means to Travis Hunter. And there's a lot of people out here, I'm not going to call nobody out their name because I'm about to say goofies, but there's a lot of folks out here that want to just have sound bites and just want to say things that don't really equate to nothing. I'm going to say this again. When you have an athlete, that loves on a coach in the manner which you saw in that, that excerpt there with Coach Prime and Travis Hunter, that's not manufactured. That's real. And when you have an athlete that's like that, that looks at their coach in that manner, that athlete is willing to run through a brick wall on fire for that coach. That means he'll get out there and do any and everything that you ask for him to do. And guess what? The team's going to follow suit. Because if he feels that way, the rest of those teams, the rest of those players on their team feel the exact same way he does. And they're going to do whatever it takes for them to get out there and make sure that this thing happens. But I know y'all are, hey, coach, we don't want to hear the sob stories. Let's get on to the, let's get on to the, to the, to the, to the rough and rugged. Give me what you, what, give me what you really thought about this. Well, people kept saying Coach Prime was, you know, he was capping when it came down to him having athletes on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, he can't have another Hampton. He can't have another Houston. It ain't possible. Well, I mean, you still got Arby Miller there that's putting in work. And then, daggone, you had Niles Gaddy out there going to work. And you had the rest of those daggone defensive linemen out there, as well as those linebackers that was putting in work as well, and those DBs on that defensive side of the ball, putting in work. I stated the defense, I said, I stated to everyone, the game is going to be won in the trenches. And when I'm sitting there looking at Niles Gaddy put that work in out there on that defensive side of the ball, I'm like, wait one freaking minute. Oh, by the way, Niles, your pop said, hey, dang on good work. Wait to see you out there kicking behind, son. He proud of you. That ain't hey, straight. That's from your pops. You know, I talked to your pops. Pops had me rolling with that one. But, hey, uh, salute to you, Mr. Gaddy, as well, as far as, you know, making sure that you got the young man ready, got Niles ready for his upcoming season. Hey, you said you're going to do it. You did it. Jackson State, Coach Moore and everybody got him rocking and rolling. I'm waiting to see what else more that's going to come from this young man because I honestly believe this guy's going to turn this thing into something epic this upcoming season. I'm just going to sit back and watch it, sit back and watch it unfold, unfold along with the rest of those defensive linemen as well as the offense that's really putting in, putting in work out there on the field. Them guys average four yards per carry in this game. Jackson State, Jackson State was running that ball at a high clip. Savion Wilkinson and Marshall got out there. They both of them had over 50 yards rushing the ball apiece. So looking at that, it just makes you wonder, okay, what else more Jackson State got underneath the underneath the hood for everybody to see what's going on? Not to mention, QB1 went 17 to 17 throwing the ball. 29 to 33 for 323 yards, five touchdowns, and was sacked two times. Now, QB1 put on the show. I'm just gonna put. I'm telling it to you right now. QB one put on the show so tough he hit twelve different targets. This man was out there having target practice. So I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, wait a minute, where where was the defense for fam? You at in this game? I'm I'm like I said, I was really perplexed behind this because total for the Jack State uh, running back core, they had 139 yards rushing the ball and they averaged four yards per carry. As I stated before. Wilkinson and Marshall both had over 50 yards apiece. So that lets you know right there, they was putting in moves over there. Defense and special teams, hey, I tip my hat to you because when you're playing in the game of this magnitude, you want to make sure that you're hitting everything on all cylinders. You want to do special teams, offense, defense, and you want to have a kick a game on point, and everything was smooth. Auto Automatica Mata, that's my dude right there. That man was out there kicking them extra points, them field goals. I'm sitting there like, that's what I'm talking about, man. Way to go. So Jackson State went out there. They executed the game plan on point from top to bottom. Yes, they had a couple of hiccups here and there as far as penalties. Now Gaddy got hit with the one penalty where 
he was trying to get back there to the quarterback. They flagged him for uh, roughing the pass or something like that, which kept FAMU moving the ball down the field for them to put the three points up on the board. Now, look at that guy to go to the sideline. He tapped his chest said, my bad, coach, that was on me. And I'm just like, whoa. I said, okay, everybody, everybody understands what's going on. But again, if you look at that stoic look Coach Prime had on his face coming out the daggone tunnel, you knew right then and there he was laser-focused. The players, they was at ease. They was sitting back enjoying what – they enjoyed the situation. They took advantage of it, and they had fun. These young men are coming out here looking to play some ball. Fam, you – I know you got Coach Willie Simmons out here saying that this was the worst coach's job. He had, This was the worst game he ever coached ever. Well, Coach Simmons, all this don't fall on you, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you bent over backwards. I'm not going to say bent over backwards. You went, you went to war. You went to bat for your athletes to make sure that they were able to get out there and play this past weekend, or play, excuse me, play this past Sunday. And everybody came out flat. I can understand that maybe this might have took a toll on everybody, but in the same breath, I have to say that everybody that's on that team need to stand in the mirror and take a look at themselves. And are you in or are you out? The bottom line is that at the end of the day, guys, you still represent FAMU. 59 to 3 was not something I'd expected to see. I ain't gonna tell you no tell. I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, 59 points? 59 points. And I know there's a lot of family, there's a lot of family folks out there talking, hold on, coach. Hold on. We didn't beat them like that before. 45 to 7. I respect that. I respect that. But guess what? You know what the people are gonna tell you. This ain't remember the time. Like when Michael Jackson singing the song, remember the time. No, the time is right now. The time is 59 to 3 in which they, they handled y'all on Sunday, in which everybody was expecting a lot better game than what it was. But, hey, it is what it is. I know this upcoming week, FAMU goes to play Albany State. Now, I, hey, I don't want to see the beating of the chest this week. I, I really don't. I'm just Coach going to tell it to you straight, I don't. Because the beating of the chest I wanted to see happen was Sunday. That's what I wanted to see. And I'll be honest with you, Coach G got some ballers over there at Albany State, so y'all can take them light if you want to. <laughs> Listen, they got some ballers over there too that can, that can get after it. And I'm sure they're going to be ready and willing to do what they got to do to come out there and compete this upcoming weekend. Jackson State plays Tennessee State in the Southern Heritage Classic. I will be at that game as well. So I look forward to seeing many of you at that game also. But guys, all I'm going to tell you is this. I had a wonderful time while I was in Miami. I Look, I'm just getting back. Um, I, like I said, if I'm not having fun, I'm not doing it. I wanted more so. I wanted to take my time and get my words together for, as far as everything that was going on. I didn't want to just come give you a video just to give you a video or give you some commentary to say, hey, here it is. This is what's going on. I want to really get my mind get my mind together as far as the thinking that I had, the thought process that I wanted to come with because there's a lot of things that kind of just rubbed me the wrong way with conversation. I'm like, the athletes, you, the athletes are given a game plan. You follow the game plan through to see which way it goes. And I kind of feel that moral victory with North Carolina, I kind of think has some folks feeling like, yo, if we can go out here and play with them like this, we can go ahead and handle Jackson State with no problem. And Jackson State came out here a totally different animal in which nobody expected this. And this is what happened. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and step off. I ain't gonna go no further on this, but I'll tell you this, we get 100 likes on this video. We're definitely going to go live. Coach is about to start trying to get some lives in. I've been, uh, a lot of folks was telling me at the stadium, hey, coach, we need you to go live. So I'm going to tell you this now. We get 100 likes on this. Coach going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to set it up. We're going to go live. And then we're going to see, we're going to see what happens with all that. But, guys, I, again, I enjoyed every last one of you at the Orange Blossom Classic. Thank you guys again, uh, especially the, the family that uh, me and my girl sat with in the stands. They had us cracking up from top to bottom pops. I told you I was going to put you in this video. I wouldn't even go play no games with you. But uh, I got more pictures and stuff that I got to post up that I might not have posted already. But, again, I thank you all again. I keep saying thank you all again. That that just shows how much you guys mean to me. I appreciate you. But I'm not going to be no more. I'm not going to be long-winded any longer. I'm going to go ahead and get off this thing. Tune in, tap in, tell a friend of a friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever you got to tell, tell them to come on in. It's number positive vibes. We're just having a good time, and the season just getting started. But I tell you this, remember, be the one and lead.